Hello and welcome to Cheetah Coding. So about a week ago, I did a video about RiverPod in Flutter. It's a state management library. And I wanted to do a part two to kind of discuss a few other things that could be pretty useful with RiverPod. So those include using hooks for RiverPod. So that will include adding a new library. And I wanted to also talk about two modifiers for RiverPod. And those are the family modifier and the auto dispose modifier. So if you go to the docs real quick, for the RiverPod docs, you can see the modifiers here, family and auto dispose. So those two I wanna actually discuss in this video, along with the hooks RiverPod package and the Flutter hooks package. Okay, so I've already added these two packages here in the app. So you can see installing, add this line and add this line here too. Okay, so you can see in the pub spec, I added that here. This code here is the finished code from part one. So I'm not going to go into detail too much about the hooks in Flutter, but if you go to the website here to Flutter hooks, you can see that you have to actually implement something called a hook widget. Okay, so back to the app real quick. The first thing I want to do is go to the user list widget here, and then I want to replace stateless widget with a hook widget. Okay, and the hook widget, if you go inside the source code here, you can see that it extends stateless widget. So you cannot use a hook widget on a stateful widget. Okay, so the benefit of using the hook widget is that we can replace our consumer here that we did in part one. So I can get rid of this. Actually, let's copy this first. So get rid of the consumer and just return our list builder. And then up here in the build, I can do final, let's call it writer equals, and the hook that we are going to use is called use provider. Okay, and then we can put in the provider here. And that replaced our consumer there. So now we can go up here to our provider. Actually, let's rename this to user list because this is actually our user list. So once you do use provider, user list provider, this will be our user list controller, the state of that, which would just be our user list. Okay, so we can go down here and now you can see that we don't have to replace anything here. So let's reload and see what happens. So, oh, we need to save and now let's reload. Now let's try and add something. And you can see that it works the same way as before. So using the hook was just a good way to get rid of that consumer widget itself. So you can see how that's a lot less code. It's a lot easier to read. So before the video, I put a new function in the Cheetah API file here. Um, I put the git country future here. So this pretty much does the same thing as the git profile username, but now we just return Thailand instead of my name here, okay? And now I want to go to the user list screen and I'm going to put that in the app bar here. We can go up here and I could just copy and paste that from here actually. So user list. And then I will call this one provider because this one is actually using the provider directly with no state. So let's import this. Import this. And now in the app bar, I'm gonna say, like we did before, I'm gonna say provider dot win. So the win takes in a few different parameters. So we have data and we have a, uh, yeah, loading, we have loading and we have the error message. Okay, and these should all return widgets. Error. And parentheses. Okay, and the text widget should go inside of the data here, like so. And for the data, we pass in whatever the value of the provider is. So we pass in the country here. And then I can say country right here. 
And now for the loading, we could just copy that from the home screen. So let's go up here and put the loading in. So loading. And for the error, let's do the same here. So we're just putting the error with a stack trace inside of here too. Okay, so that's just getting some more practice with using the dot win with the use provider hook. Okay, so let's restart. You can see we have that here. Let's add. Okay, so you can see we have a error here. So there's a couple of things that we need to fix here. So first I'm using the wrong provider. So I need to create a new provider for the country. And second, this is not a hook widget. So first let's change this to a hook widget okay so that's the error that you'll see not equal to null use context can only be called from the build method of a hook widget okay then for our provider we can get rid of this one here and now let's go to the providers file and down here i want to say final country provider equals future provider of type string and then I'm going to say underscore for now. And then return the get country API method. So back to the user list screen. Now I can pass in that country provider here. So keep in mind that this expects a async value. So before the user list provider is using a state notifier, which doesn't work with this win here. And if you go back to the home screen, like before, you can see we had a sync string. So we can say a sync string in our user list screen too, if you want to. Okay, just to define the type here. So you can say this. And I think we are good here. So let's reload. Now the list should not get any error. Loading for five seconds in Thailand. So. We can go back here. So that's all I really wanted to talk about for the for the hooks. There's more that you can do with it in Riverpod, but this covers like the basics. So back to the home screen. I can't change this to a hook widget because I'm using a stateful widget. I could change how I created the form, but that's out of the scope for this video. So back to the provider. Actually, back to the Cheetah API. Now I want to talk about two modifiers in Riverpod. So back to the documentation, you can see we have family and auto dispose. So first I will talk about the family, I guess. So family basically lets you pass in an extra value. Keep in mind that you can only pass in one value. There's ways around that, but for now, We'll just focus on the one value being passed in. So you pass in the ref like normal, and then you pass in another field here. And they have a good example of you might passing in an ID for an API call. So let's go back. And I want to create a family for the stream provider. Doing that is pretty easy. You could say stream provider dot family here. So you get an error here because it expects two types here. So before we were just showing a zero, one, two, three, four up here in the app bar, but now I want to show a string that includes that number two. So now I'm going to say string will be the value and the value that we pass into the API call here will also be a string. So I want to say string string. And now down here we have our ref. So we could say ref for now, but you could keep it as underscore. I will just keep it as an underscore because I want to pass in the the second field, but I don't care about the ref itself. So we'll pass in units. So I'm going to define the units that we're counting down. So in our case, it'll be seconds because it'll go from zero, one, two, three seconds. And then for the units, I want to pass that into the get session time. Okay. So we can go to get session time now. And now I can pass in string units. And now instead of just returning the session time plus plus, I want to return a string with that value. So after the arrow here, instead of session plus plus, I want to create a string. So I want to say string 
And then I want to put that value into here first. So like so with our brackets and don't forget the dollar sign. And then I want to say dollar sign units. Okay, so this would be our string that we return. And you can see we get an error because we have to change the type here too. So change this from a int to a string. So we can put a comma here. That looks good. The provider looks good. So let's go back to the home widget. And before the video, I commented out the countdown or the count up. So let's uncomment that. And now we get an error for the session time provider because it expects a argument here. So we have to pass in something. So here we pass in the unit. I'm going to pass in a string sec. And this has to be of type string here. So string. Okay, and the errors are gone, so that's good. And that's all we need to do here. So we can actually get rid of the two string part too now because this is a string by default. And now let's reload. So you can see zero second, one second, two second, three second. Let's change the text size to be smaller. That looks better. So we see that works now. So now I'm going to get rid of this just to save some processing power. So let's go back and get rid of this again. Um, center. Okay. So that pretty much covers how to add a extra value to your provider. And like the documentation says, it's very useful for any API calls where you need to pass in something like an ID or like a search parameter. So now I want to show you how to use one value of a provider in another provider. Okay, so pretty much using the get profile username here. So this underscore represents our ref. So now I'm going to say ref here. And now I want to pass in the value of our channel name provider into this API call here. So doing that is really easy. You could say ref dot read. And then you say channel name provider. Okay, and we get an error because this does not expect a, another value here. So let's add that to the get profile username. And I will call that string company. And now I just want to add that company name to this return value. So I can say dollar sign company dash Julian Curry. So reload. And now you can see cheetah coding, Julian Curry. Let's make that text a little bit smaller. So let's go up here, text. Let's do font size 14. Let's do 16. Okay, that looks good. So we covered the family modifier and we covered referencing other providers from within a different provider. So referencing other providers can get a little bit tricky once you start trying to reference uh, features and streams instead of other feature and stream providers. So uh, be careful about the timing with that. But this is a very simple example of how to read a constant provider value inside of a feature provider. OK, just do read or ref.read. Uh, you could do ref.watch for values that can change, but I would be careful about doing that because you might run into some unexpected behavior. So I would stick to reading the values, not watching the values of other providers. So the final thing I want to talk about is the auto dispose modifier in Riverpod. So let's uh, restart this again. And the last thing I want to cover is the auto dispose modifier in Riverpod. So you can see when we go to the list screen for the first time, we call that method, right? We call the get country here, right? From our provider. So we load it for five seconds and it's Thailand. If we go back to the previous screen and we go back to it again, that is still there. So the state is still there from before. So that's really handy, but what if you want that function to be called again? Right now it's not being called again. So that's where the auto dispose comes in. The auto dispose modifier lets you control whether the state is maintained when a widget is no longer being used or when a provider is no longer being used, whether the widget has been destroyed or disposed or whatever.
So for the country provider, I want to say future provider dot auto dispose. Okay. Now we have auto dispose here. Remember the state was maintained before when we went to the second screen. So let's go there now. First time it loads after five seconds, you'll see Thailand. Then we go back. Now, if you go there again, you'll see that it loads again. So, so we're calling this API method every time we re-enter the screen, which might be what you want. It might not be what you want, but this is what happens when you set the auto dispose modifier here. So if you want more control over that, you can go down here and we will make a function. Let's cut this. And now I will define a string here. I will say string country equals this. And we need to do await. And we can return the country here. Turn country. So this is the same as before, but now you can have more control. You can use the ref here. So you can say ref, you can say ref dot maintain state. So this is the heart of what auto dispose does. The maintain state is set to false by default. So that's why when you go back into your screen here, it reloads because we're not maintaining the state. So if we set it to true now and reload, First time we go back in there, it loads for five seconds. And then we say Thailand. Now, if you go back out and go back in, the state is maintained here. And you might be asking like, why would you want to not maintain the state or maintain the state? So having this control lets you do some things like ref ref maintain state equals false. So for example, you can say like, if, um, Actually, we can call this response here too. So we can say response, for example, do something with the response. You can say if response equals like something that you have in your API, um, not found, then maintain state equals false, else maintain state true and then you would do like string country equals response or whatever you want to do with it and then return that here so this would be helpful if you want to retry your api call for example so yeah um i think i'm going to stop here but you can see how powerful it is and i recommend giving it a try um compare it to provider uh, give it a try see if you like it so yeah stay tuned for the next video and happy coding bye